It's that time of year again. It's time to talk about the ban list because God knows we need one. Even the Ultra Ball knows that we need one. Let's dive on into it, shall we? And I hope this happens sooner rather than later. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever-living ban list boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder as we inch closer and closer to 1,100 subscribers. I really do appreciate all of the support. I hope you all are having a great day. I truly do mean that. So let's dive on into... Uh, <laughs> Balance predictions, shall we? Uh, I feel like that these are things that should happen to fix the game. Obviously, I'm not going to try and predict what uh, Konami's going to do because that's like trying to catch a falling sword. And uh, I don't want my butthole catching a sword because uh, that's really going to hurt, ladies and gentlemen. So instead, we are just going to make our tight cheeks figure out what should be hit. So I hope you'll join me for the ride. I probably lost about 10 subscribers just sounding very weird like that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump into the bands. Um... Right out of the gate, uh, Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds needs to uh, go hit the curb and don't let the door hit its butt cheeks on the way out. <laughs> because this card, honestly, when you think about the Flunder end board, they're typically ending on like Empin with maybe some back row, Magnificent Map, and like Storm Winds. But is Empin really that scary of a card? I would argue that it's not. Storm Winds is what makes it so broken because it's a wind and a wing beast. So it's just so much more easily searchable and so much easier to get to with like any sort of future wing beast support that we get. And that's taking a page out of the OCG's book. That's not even like just me saying that. The OCG also banned Storm Winds and it's also banned in Master Shits. Even though I hate that game for the life of me, it does have some interesting things when it comes to the ban list and it's an interesting perspective and I'll give it that for what little I can actually give it <laughs> and it gets the mind thinking like could we see this hit in the IRL game and I think with it being hit in the OCG more than master shits that's just kind of whatever it's just something interesting to think about at the end of the day but with it being banned in the OCG I think we will see that hit here in the TCG as well because Keep in mind, we've got Photon Hypernova coming up in February, and three months after that, we get Cyberstorm Access, which is looking like a very juicy piece of pie. They're going to want to push those sets, and I think that they want to move all these things out of the way to make room for these new decks. So Stormwinds, I think, has got to go. Ending on an end pin really isn't all that scary. You just summon your shit in defense, and you're good. Um, next up here is some combination of the Ashizu Fairies. I mentioned this on my last ban list discussion video before we got the, what many are calling the emergency ban list that brought back D Fisher macro to three and all that. And so I think we will actually see a real cleanup, so to speak, of the Ashizu Fairies in some way, whether it's Keldeo, Medora being banned or Aigido and Kelbic being banned, some sort of combination of those cards being limited or banned needs to happen. You cannot have a healthy format with Aigido, Kelbic, Keldeo, and Medora all at three because th those cards are just like, I would argue the most broken cards of 2022 of what that year was. They, they just need to go. They're way too insane. Um, I feel like even hitting all of them to one, honestly, is just not enough because then it's like, well, I hit the one of, you know, Mill card or, oh, I've got my one of Keldeo Amadora. I'm going to send back a total of six cards from your grave into the deck. And it's, it's just toxic. It needs to go. Let, let's pretend that this format of tier zero never happened. Uh, next up here is an interesting one. I saw this in a TCG player article and that's terraforming. Now, Hear me out on this. Don't, don't get mad in the comments and be like, bro. Be, 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 be. I literally had someone comment was like, this is a terrible Yu-Gi-Oh video. This is the worst YouTuber I've ever watched. I couldn't even watch two minutes of the video. And I'm like, <laughs> like, okay. Like, uh, is that supposed to make me upset? Like, I don't care. Like, go touch grass, bro. That's something we haven't said on the channel in a while. Go touch grass. So anyway, terraforming. Here's my reasoning with terraforming. And I forget who wrote the article on TCG Player, but they made a really good point. With terraforming being at one and with all of these new field spells coming into the game, there's always that issue of you can search it with terraforming and like it can possibly get your combos going. You're essentially in any deck that requires a field spell, which I would argue I'd say like 95% of decks have some sort of like broken field spell, you know. Flunder has Magnificent Map. 
tier elements have primeval planet. Cash Tira is going to have primeval planet Pariahs. Um, any deck that even can use a field spell to generate more advantage like Exosister with Necro Valley, you know, things like that, you're essentially playing four copies of it out of the gate before you've even built your deck fully because of terraforming. And I feel like, especially with Metaverse now being at three, obviously, because Mystic Mine is banned, I feel like we could see terraforming at some point go away. I mean, years ago, we saw it go from three to one because playing six copies of your field spell is just disgusting, right? So maybe it won't happen on this list. Maybe it won't happen for another five ban lists. But my bold prediction, I believe that one day terraforming will be banned. Whether it's this ban list or another one, I feel like it's really starting to show its age. And I think Konami's getting ready to pull the trigger and ban terraforming. So that's all I have for the bans. On to the limiteds, uh, going along with the tier element of this video. Uh, some combination of tier element Meryl, Shayrun, Rhino Heart, Hoffenus, and Primeval Planet, and possibly limiting to one, since Konami TCG tends to do that, they'll take something from three to one before they ban it, Kit Kalos. We saw Kit Kalos get banned in the OCG. I would love to see that happen here in the TCG. I want tier element just, if you can't tell by this balance yet, I want a Scorched Earth, take tier element out back, and just shoot it in the nuts, you know, because it's... <laughs> to quote uh, some other YouTuber that I saw on like the YouTube shorts, uh, <laughs> the, the tier element has just been letting the nuts hang for too long, bro. Like it's it's the deck that is just the big old Chad in the room. And to quote the YouTube short I saw, they're just letting their nuts hang. Like it, it, it needs to go. You know, we, we need to have a Scorch Earth just destroy tier in some combination of all the main deck tiers with Kit Kalos going to one or getting banned. They need to be taken care of because if you don't take care of it, then Cash Tira is just going to evolve with Tier Element and become Cash Tira Tier Element. Then we're still going to be in a Tier Zero format. It's just going to be Tier Element with a different coat of paint with the Cash Tira cards. Keep in mind that in Photon Hypernova, we are getting literally a monster called Tier Element Cash Tira that just gives them more milling or it can mill the opponent. So you need to reel this deck in in some way, shape, or form. Next up here is Runic Tip. Now, Runic Tip, you're probably thinking, Avery, why in the hell are you going to hit Runics by hitting Runic Tip? The fact that you are playing three copies of a card that is essentially a blank card, like it just becomes any Runic spell that you want, and it mills the top card because why not? It's a Runic card. I feel like that because of the fact that this deck, this card, excuse me, can just search pretty much anything in the deck, like it can get you to Fountain, it can get you to Allure, which you shouldn't be playing because the card's kind of bad in my opinion, but it gets you to like, even if you're just trying to loop droplets, like you can just go tip, the opponent banishes the top card and you just get droplets and then you're hitting them for a total of six cards. Even if the opponent chooses, oh, hey, my game plan's going to be I'm not going to interact with you. Okay, cool. As long as I can loot my tips and droplets, then I'm going to beat you anyway. It can get you to fountain to make your hand that much better. I just think that tip really needs to go to one. Such an amazing search card like that. We've seen things like that hit in the past, like with Stratos. It, it needs to go. Next up here is Zemmighty. Zemmighty has been banned for God knows how long. Zemmighty can come back to one and it's fine. If you're worried about wind up Hunter loops, put Hunter on a hard once per turn or ban the thing. Like even with Zemmighty at one, wind ups aren't going to do anything. Just bring the card back. And then next up here, I have Ancient Fairy at one. It did get an errata. Slap the errata on it, just whoosh, and then bring it back to one and it'll be fine. Um, the two here, I really don't have much of anything. Just Sky Striker Engage. I think since we're getting a lot of Sky Striker support, down the line, just throw them a bone and give them a second engage. They just reprinted the whole deck core in Magnificent Maven, so why would you not put engage to two? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, and then finally here to three, I had Potted Desires and Fire Formation 10 key because it's fine. Like, Tri Brigade's not going to do anything next format, and if it does, then oh well. Like, it's Tri Brigade. Uh, Yadagorasu to three, it's not doing anything. Substitute to three, again, it's not doing anything. And then for my last two, I'm probably going to get some hate for this too. Final Countdown and Chain Strike. Why are Final Countdown and Chain Strike still at one? Mystic Mine is banned. It's not going to come back anytime soon. Bring back Final Countdown and Chain Strike to three, Konami. The, the Final Countdown has not done anything in years. Like, just bring the card back to three. Bring Chain Strike back to three. It's not going to do anything. Throw Burn some kind of a bone. Like, the... What is the point of having Final Countdown at three? Having it at one, if you activate it and it gets negated, then the player who's playing Final Countdown just loses. Just give them their three copies back. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. So, guys, these are my banless thoughts. No, I don't think Maxi's coming back. No, Mystic Mind's not going to come back. No, Halky Fibrax is not going to come back. All those cards need to be banned. <laughs> um, 
I thought about maybe saying the Dragon Rulers could come back to one, but I don't want to get crucified in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. Maybe one day the other banned Dragon Rulers can come back to one. It'll happen one of these days. But I think for the time being, I think that this is a good starting point. I think it definitely helps reset the format to a very good extent to where we can go into Photon Hypernova with basically a clean slate. Like, we know that Cash Tier is going to be a good deck. Like, th that's no surprise. Um, this way, it just it eliminates all of the just dumpster fire that Yu-Gi-Oh is in right now in a tier zero format and also bring some things back that people can potentially have fun with. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know if there's something I missed, something I forgot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.